Final Collection Part 50 within this series, continuing on with all the new additions within my collection from B to roughly around the midsection of the C's. Other than that, what's going to be playing in the background is going to be Kronos with their full-length album, Colossal Titan Strife. One of the first ever death metal bands and albums I discovered on my own, it must have been roughly around 2011 or 2012, um, that was roughly around the time where YouTube allowed users to upload videos longer than 15 minutes. And when that happened, so many people were, uh, were uh, uploading videos of like compilations of all different albums from all different genres. And um, I think I came across one that was like a hundred death metal album compilation. I just thought that was insane that there's a hundred death metal albums out there. And I you know, checked it out and came across Kronos, and this album just blew me away of just how monstrous everything sounded. The riffs, the drumming, the vocals just has like this bulldozing like effect to it. And it just slays from beginning to end. And hopefully one day they'll do an LP press for it. But uh, big nostalgic trip for me listening to this all over again. And if you enjoy Brutal Death Metal, you'll definitely enjoy this. Kicking this vinyl collection part off is going to be a group that I'm going to purposely say wrong their band name. That being The Beat Nags with their debut full length album. So these guys were an industrial hip-hop group based out of California. And this was released in 1988, and every time I search these guys up online, the comments are immediately the 1980s version of Death Roots. Because I swear to God, every time I come across an experimental hip-hop group or artist, it's like immediately the internet has to compare them to Death Grips. And these guys honestly sound nothing like them because the big difference for one is lyrically this is way more politically charged and it has a strong like attitude of punk embedded with the songwriting which makes sense as to why the label Alternative Tentacles ended up signing this group which is really weird at face value because Alternative Tentacles is just a straight up punk label and they sign a hip-hop group. Kind of weird, but again, it's a strong essence of like a punk attitude embedded with everything. Songs to check out are Television, uh, In the Morning, and Who Is Doing This All. Killer stuff. And it sucks that this is the only album they ever released. And from my knowledge, two of the members broke off from this and created another project called, I think, uh, the Disposable Heroes of Hypocrisy, which it kind of takes this, that other project, but it's not as industrial, but still like that has that experimental conscious hip hop vibe with it, which is really good. And I'd like to get a copy of it, but um, yeah, later on I'll get that. As for this, honestly, you can get this album by the Beatnags super dirt cheap. I got mine on Discogs for under five bucks and with shipping and handling it came out to under ten bucks and there's still copies floating around on discogs for again under ten bucks so i think it's worth definitely worth the uh, price but uh, yeah other than that for the layout and packaging with this you have album artwork backside with track listings comes on a plain black vinyl but it also includes all these flyers and kind of uh, papers Again, flyers and other stuff to do with the alternative tentacle records, which really gives off a strong DIY punk vibe with it. So again, I'm just surprised that all of this would come with an LP and they're being sold on Discogs for dirt cheap. So again, definitely worth the money. Next record is going to be The Berserker with their sophomore full-length album, Dissimulate. Finally, Earache has put a Berserker album on the LP format. Sadly, it's a picture disc and it comes within these shitty plastic sleeves, which I hate. I think it's very cheap and I, I would expect Earache to do better with such a big label that they are. But regardless, I couldn't help myself. I needed something by the Berserker on the LP format. But yeah, I've gushed about these guys plenty of times before on my channel. I made a video all about them and I've talked in depth as to what I think about them and this particular album. But for those who don't know, The Berserker is an Australian 
like industrial death grind band that um, kind of has more influence of that with like hardcore techno and gabber with their overall foundation of their influence, but just insanely chaotic and super extreme metal that um, arguably for their time they were one of the most extreme bands on planet Earth. To simulate, however, is their only album where they have an actual drummer. And everything else was always programmed drums. But, yeah, nothing much to see with the picture desk other than the album artwork on this side. And the other side is just a band picture, which, I mean, does look pretty cool, but again, it sucks that it's a picture disc. Other than that, one thing to point out here is with the sleeve, it's hand numbered. I have number 51 of 300. And it also includes an A3 poster of the album artwork. Then I have the self-titled full-length album by Bethlehem. This was released back in 2016, and this is the first ever album Bethlehem would release with their new vocalist, that being, I'm pretty sure she's still the current one, Yovanya, which she's mostly known for being the front woman for the band Darkened Nocturne Slaughter Cult, and she brings her A game on this album with her overall vocal performance because it's deranged and intense sounding. And I feel like what they were trying to do here was recapture the sound of the fan favorite, that being when they had Rainer Ladferman. And for the most part, I think they succeeded on it. She sounds eerily similar to his pitch and overall style. They did a good job with it. But basically, I have everything by Bethlehem at this point. And the reason why I have this and the follow-up album, which I'll talk about in a second, is right over here on the video show. I have the uh, Bethlehem box set, which contains basically everything they ever did from beginning to around 2014. The only thing it doesn't include is the latest two full-length albums. But yeah, if you enjoy early Bethlehem, I feel like the self-titled captures that spirit for the most part, and it's a great album. Got this on Prophecy, and I'm pretty sure there are copies still available there if you want to grab one. But as for the layout and packaging with this, you have album artwork, backside with the band logo, comes on a gatefold, and this LP pressing comes on white. And as I just stated earlier, I have their follow-up full-length album that was released back in 2019. Now this is the latest thing that they've done, so it's been like four years, and from my understanding there probably won't be any new Bethlehem material for a while, because I forgot to mention that Yuvanya, again the vocalist for Bethlehem currently, sadly had to go through chemotherapy as she had, she was diagnosed, sorry, with a breast cancer back in 2021, so hopefully she's doing well with that. I know it's very, very difficult to go through, but for the meantime, with uh, Bethlehem, this is still their latest full-length album. And I would say what they were trying to do with this album is go back into the experimental route that they were doing around the midway portion within their discography. So there's a bit more usage of electronics and keyboards on here that uh, kind of, you know, drenches the album in a bit of ambience. So, um, again, really good stuff. And again, if you enjoy black metal and doom metal for the most part, definitely check out the latest full-length album by Bethlehem. But once again, put out through Prophecy Records, and I grabbed my copy through them, so go there if you want to score a copy. As for the layout and packaging, you have album artwork, backside with the track listings, comes on a gatefold, and this LP is just on standard black vinyl. Up next is Eva Batova. She is a singer-songwriter based out of the Czech Republic, and a majority of her work is her collaborating with a bunch of different artists and experimenting with all different styles of music. Yet with this release, again, not sure if it's either a full length or a compilation, it's just her playing everything of just vocals and violin. It's very minimalistic, the presentation here, but her violin skill is just masterful. And I, I don't know, I just admire the violin playing on this album. And her singing is quite relaxing, to say the least. 
I don't know, just this overall release I find to be kind of soothing because with just everything else of like extreme metal and like harsh music, every now and then I need like a background break type of album. And this definitely hits the spot when I'm in the mood for hearing anything that's focused on uh, the violin instrument. So really interesting stuff, but quite the oddball to say the least from everything else I've been talking about within this video. But yeah, score this on Discogs a while back. Not really sure where you can get copies of it. But as for the layout and packaging with this, it's pretty minimalistic. You just got album artwork and backside with the track listings. And this just comes on a standard black vinyl. Getting right back into metal territory, up next I have the debut full length album by Black Death. This right here is considered to be the first ever all African member based heavy metal band and it is just so simultaneously sleazy and ass kicking at the same time. That's what this album just radiates non-stop when you listen to it and uh, man, it's so good. Released back in I believe either 1983 or 84 and it's just such a burner of an album. I mean, come on, listen to the opening track on here, that being Night of the Living Dead. You hear that intro scream. It's like, how can you not fall in love with the whole album right after it? Other great tracks on here, The Hunger, Fear No Evil, The Scream of the Iron Messiah. Shit is awesome. So, so good. Again, heavy metal with a bit of a punk influence, but the solos are just so red, burning hot, and face melting. Again, it just radiates the energy of both sleaze and ass-kicking. So awesome. And for the longest time, Hell's Headbangers has been keeping this in print. And for some reason, I never jumped the gun on getting a copy. And ever since I got mine a handful of months back, I've been wondering as to why I waited so long. So again, go to Hell's Headbangers if you want to score copies of this. But as for the lay on packaging with it, you have album artwork, backside with the track listings, comes on a gatefold. This also includes an A2 poster of the album artwork, along with a printed inner sleeve. So you have side A and side B with this really ridiculous band photo. And this final pressing comes on the German flag color of yellow, red, and black. Oh, and I also forgot to mention that this Hell's Headbangers pressing also includes a seven inch that including the songs Here Comes the Wrecking Crew and Retribution. Again, of the same color variant of the German flag of yellow, red, and black. And from there, we go right back into oddball territory, so to say. Because next up is Blackie with his full-length album, Jen. So Blackie, which is spelled B space L. Every time you search them up, it's always Blackie with spaces in parentheses is what it is. Pretty sure it's a hip-hop artist based out of Texas, and his approach is very different within hip-hop as it blends elements of industrial grime and noise together with a lot of experimentation. And I know I'm going to be really big of a hypocrite right here. As I said earlier, with when I was talking about the beat nags, that every time it's like an experimental hip hop artist, you're always comparing them to Death Grips. And I've complained about that, and right here I'm about to bite my tongue and do that. But Blackie does remind me of Death Grips. The big difference, however, is that Blackie is way more emotive with his overall delivery of verses. And again, it reminds me a bit of like punk music, again, just with his overall aggression and just how, like, punchy the, the uh, not riffs, the beats are within his music. Because songs on here like Radio Wave's Last Words, Everybody Knows, False Marriages, and My Oath, it's really aggressive and emotive and harsh hip-hop music. And I've been meaning to get more of his stuff, and recently he's been repressing all of his albums on LP. Very limited quantity, so I'm picking them up as quickly as I can. But happy to see that he repressed this album, Jen, for his like 10th anniversary. And hopefully he represses the rest of his discography. But yeah, other than that, definitely check out Blackie, because it's rare that I ever see anyone ever know of him or talk of him, let alone 
But as for the lay on packaging with this, really bare bones. You just got Al Mart work and the back side is just all the track listings and just comes on standard black vinyl. And I have Blackie's follow-up album, that being Remains. Out of everything within his discography thus far, this is easily the most experimental as there's elements of drone and at times he also utilizes a saxophone, but not in the sense of like it's jazz influence or tries to you know create some sort of like beat or melody. He uses the saxophone primarily to create this very dense sounding drone effect. That's how it's always been. And again, if you check out his work, it's very abrasive hip hop music. Other than that, this really isn't the best place to start out with him as again, as I just stated, it's very experimental and it's not really all that hip hop influence besides a handful of tracks. It's more of just kind of creating like a soundscape with drone and hip hop beats, but still really interesting nonetheless if you're looking for something different within your musical playlist. But this is the only LP that you can find on Discogs of Blackie's work that you can actually get for a reasonable price, so go to Discogs if you want to score a copy. But as for the layout and packaging with this, you have album artwork backside with the track listings, and this LP variant comes on a dark red marble. Finally, I get to talk about this album within this final collection series, that being Breach, It's Me, God. I made a video basically dedicated to this album when I received it, as it's the only unboxing video I have posted on my channel. For eight years of failed attempts of trying to get this album, it finally ended, I don't know what, back two or three months ago, so I'm still kind of in disbelief I'm holding this record like I do, because it was such a pain in the ass, but it's over. But again, Breach is a hardcore band based out of Sweden that from the conversations I've had with people, it's often compared to that of Neurosis, but I would say darker and way more emotive. And just everything about this album, the vocal delivery, the riffs, the drumming, the bass tone, it's just everything I would want in a hardcore band and then some. It's just so, so, so good. Tracks in here to check out basically all of them, but my personal favorite would be God Forgive Me, which is only like I think a song that's like two and a half minutes long. Have yet to get sick of that song. Uh, Replenish the Empty, uh, Deadheads is another great track. In My Realm, just again, everything. I'm, I basically should just name every single track on this album is worthy of checking out. Again, one of my all time favorite albums within music as a whole. And when you listen to it, hopefully you'll understand as to why I say that because just really dark heavy, emotive, hardcore music from start to finish. But as for the layout and packaging with this, this is the 2014 repress. So you have album artwork, whereas the uh, first press is the same thing, only it's this picture loaded out covering the whole uh, LP itself. Backside with nothing on it. Comes on a gatefold with artwork and track listing inside, and it's just on double LP plain black vinyl. Proceeding on to Brutal Truth with their day full length album, Extreme Conditions Demand Extreme Responses. If you're a grindcore fan and you don't know this album, you're not a grindcore fan. Simple as that. This is a mandatory must know and listen for every grindcore fan from the, you know, diehards to the moderate fans. It's a must-know, simple as that. That arguably this was one of the first real big heavy hitters of grindcore from the United States, as this album was released in 1992, and I'm pretty sure they formed in 1990. And start to finish, every song is just a blitz of chaos, of everything you would want within grindcore. The only other standout features about this album is that during some of the slower parts that isn't just like a blitz of intensity, I've always felt as if 
it has like influences of hardcore music, which makes sense when you consider the fact that they're from New York, and only a couple of years before this band formed, New York had a really big booming hardcore scene, technically they still do, and uh, it's kind of clear that they took influence from that scene and kind of like fused it with this album, so to say, with some of the songs on here. But yeah, tracks to check out, even though they're all like, I don't know, like 30 seconds long, Anti-Homophobe, uh, Denial of Existence, and Stench of Profit are some of the standout tracks on here. But again, you should all know it if you're a Grindcore fan. This was repressed through Earache. Finally, they repressed this album and snagged it up right away. Not really sure if there are copies still available, but check Earache if you uh, want to score a copy of this mandatory album for all Grindcore fans. But as for the layout and packaging with this, you have album artwork, backside with the track listing. It comes on a gatefold. It includes an A3 poster of the album artwork. And this vinyl pressing comes on red, limited to 200 copies. Up next is Brovanal 2 with, I believe, his, as it's a one-man project, full-length album, At War. Brovanal 2 is a black metal band from Canada that I've talked about a handful of times as I have a few other of his full-length albums on LP. But recently, the label called Death Hymns has been putting all of his work recently on the LP format. I've just been buying them up. As I've always found this band to be quite interesting, it's black metal, yes, but it's very atmospheric and at times it has elements of death metal and ambience kind of laced together with its overall approach that, I don't know, when it plays really heavy and aggressive, it kind of sounds like an atmospheric death metal band at times. Then there's other portions where the ambience kind of gets more utilized and it sounds like atmospheric black metal. So it kind of goes back and forth with those styles and I don't know, it's always really worked with me. And I think it's a standout within Canadian black metal that doesn't get enough recognition. So again, if you're going for more of like heavy atmospheric death metal, definitely check out Rolvonal 2's work. Again, this was put up through Death Hymns, so Try that label and see if there are copies still floating over there. But as for the layout and packaging with this, you have album artwork, backside with the track listing. And this comes on a gatefold, and it's just on double LP, plain black vinyl. Then I have the latest full-length album by Candelabrum, Nocturnal Trance. One of my personal favorite albums of last year, as it's raw black metal that heavily utilizes keyboards. And while that is nothing groundbreaking or new for the style of music, what I just find interesting is the contrast between the two of the keyboards and the raw black metal sections. I feel like it brings out the best within each other. It makes the keyboard sections feel all the more melodic and full of ambience while making the black metal sections feel all the more raw and just cuts deeper, I feel like. Really interesting, the contrast that's utilized. And from what I know, I'm pretty sure the individual behind Candelabrum, it's the same guy who does all of everything for Black Solis, so again, it's all a one-man project. So this guy's pretty consistent on releasing new music, so it's really impressive. And what I always thought is that Black Solis is raw black metal that's just really straightforward and necro sounding. Where Candelabrum is you take Black Solis's approach and just smother it with ambience and keyboards essentially. And I really need to step up my game and get everything else I'm missing by Candelabrum because I've been sleeping on this uh, project for far too long. And one other thing I just want to point out that this might just be useless information, but uh, I find it really interesting that Black Solis and Candelabrum is based out of Portugal because my ethnicity, I'm pretty sure I'm like 90% Portuguese, so it's pretty cool that the ethnicity that I'm, uh, you know, my home country has something like this coming out of it, so something I just wanted to point out. But anyway, more importantly, as to where you can get this uh, LP, 
Hell's Headbangers has uh, copies loaded in stock, and I'm pretty sure Iron Bonehead uh, also carries everything else by both Black Solise and Candelabrum. But as for the layout and packaging with this, you have Almart Warp, backside with the band logo and track listings. This includes an insert sheet with lyrics and a band photo on the other side, along with an A2 poster. And this final press comes on black and white split, limited to 300 copies. Finishing up this final collection part, up next is the debut Fallen Thumb by Celestial Bloodshed, that being Curse Scarred and Forever Possessed. This was a Norwegian black metal band that was formed in the 21st century, which is something to point out because when it comes to Norwegian black metal, we mostly know it for all the bands that were formed in the 90s and this was a short-lived band because roughly a little bit before this album's release the vocalist which is pictured right here on this album artwork of which you can tell he's heavily influenced by mayhem specifically the dead era of this band um died from an accidental gunshot so yeah this band ain't around anymore sadly but there's really not much to say about this other than it's just mayhem worship from start to finish. Again, if the album artwork didn't speak for itself. And I wanted to get this for the longest time, but it was always out of print. But recently, I think either a year or two ago, Terratar Possession uh, repressed this. Had to snag it up right away. And yeah, if you just want solid mayhem worship, definitely check out Celestial Bloodshed with the debut full-length album. So, other than that, for the layout and packaging with this, you have album artwork, backside with the track listings, which is all like spot gloss to look like blood. And this comes on a gatefold. This includes an insert sheet with band photos, along with a booklet, which just includes lyrics and more photography of the band. And finally, a double-sided A2 poster, so side one and side two, which hopefully you can see all that. And this LP just comes on standard black vinyl. And I have their sophomore full-length album, which I'm pretty sure it's just titled Omega, as it's just the Omega sign right there. And one thing I want to correct that I don't feel like reshooting that I said in the previous shot is that Celestial Bloodshed is technically not a band that formed in the 21st century. They formed in the year 2000 and the 21st century started in the year 2001. So a little mistake that I just want to correct right there. But anyway, with this full length album, it was released in the year 2013, which was four years after the death of their vocalist. So technically, this album comes off more like unreleased material than, you know, a full-length album. But for me personally, there's really not much here to say. I don't know. It's not really something I spent all that much. I decided to just grab it with the debut full-length album as Terratar Possessions shipping is nightmare. So I want to make the best of it. But for me, I prefer the debut. It just... Again, it's just mayhem worship, but just not as memorable for me. But again, if you want to get either of these albums, go to Terratar Possession. As for the layout and packaging with this, you have album artwork, backside with the track listing, comes on a gatefold with the lyrics inside. This also includes two inner sheets, one being a photo of the vocalist, other side with additional artwork, same thing with this insert sheet, just band logo on one side and band photo on the other. And this also includes an A2 poster of additional artwork, and it's just on standard black vinyl. And the final record for this vinyl collection part is going to be Xenotafe with their debut full-length album, The Gloomy Reflections of Our Hidden Sorrows. Finally, The Crypt has repressed this once again, that way I can finally add this within the shelves of my vinyl collection. Excellent death metal that's based out of Mexico. Now one thing I gotta admit, the Mexican death metal scene is super unappreciated. There's a lot of gems and bangers that came from the Mexican death metal scene, this being one of them. But with their overall style and approach, it takes a lot of influence 
from all of the Finnish death metal bands, stuff like Demigod and Convult, heavily influenced within this album. And I would even say, too, some of the riffs and how they're kind of played out give off like this ambient, powerful effect of something that reminds me of a uh, Time Ghoul to a certain extent. Just a lot of influence to be heard within this album, and it just slays from start to finish. And for anyone who enjoys death metal, you gotta know this stuff. So, other than that, to where you can get this, I would assume the Crypt, but it wouldn't surprise me if this is sold out. Um, hopefully they do another repress, because the Crypt is known for doing, you know, represses of like long gone out of print like death metal gems, so keep up with that label if that sounds appealing to you. But as for the layout and packaging with this, like always, the Crypt does a great job with it. So you have album artwork, backside with the track listings and band photo, comes on a gatefold. And this final press is very wild of like white, purple, black, gray, merge swirl. Really crazy looking, and I'm pretty sure this is limited to 200 copies. And that'll do it for this final collection part. Like always, everything I talked about will be in the link below along with what's playing in the background. And yeah, other than that, like always guys, make sure you guys drink plenty of water to stay hydrated and have a great day.